who gave me the possibility to present my research about Shun aristocratic tomb. So my uh, article is already published on in paper, so therefore I uh, mostly explain on the photos about my research. Uh, currently all of the Shunmu sites listed in Mongolia, Russian Federation in China, constitute more than uh, 12,000 graves and 20 satellite sites and petroglyphs. Uh, the researchers classified the cemeteries in the same way as aristocratic or ordinary people grave, or large or small. <coughs> the creating Shunu state, the emergence of strata in the society has found a direct reflection of the funeral rites and aristocracy were buried in separate places. In total of 12 funeral complexes of the Shunu have been found in Mongolia and Russia. And uh, most of the, these complex sites are located in the territory of Mongolia. As you can see here, 12 sites and uh, eight of them is located in Mongolia. The first excavation of Shunmu sites were undertaken by Talko Grantsevich between uh, 1896 and 1902 in the South Buryatia near the border of the Mongolia. As you know, in Mongolia in 1924, uh, Shunmu aristocratic grave in Noyungulda conducted uh, research by Russian explorer Petr Kozlov. In this table, you can see all the number of the Chunu aristocratic graves. So in total, it's uh, around 2,165 burials. And uh, recently, it's excavated 32 graves of all. And also, in, uh, in the below, I compared the area of the size of the cemeteries of terrace tombs. On the map, I show you the distribution of the Shunu aristocratic uh, cemeteries. And uh, by comparing the position in special, special uh, distribution of the aristocratic necropolis, which does all other forms of necropolises, we have highlighted three concentrations. In center, in the east, in the west. So uh, we propose that to test hypothesis that the necropolis reflects the administrative, administrative uh, division of the Shunmu into two parts. As you know, in uh, Chinese writing sources, when uh, they create the empire, they divide it into two parts, as central and uh, east and western wings. That the most of funeral complex of the Shunu aristocrats consist of aristocratic terrace tombs and small circular tombs satellites around the main grave. The external structure of the Shunu aristocratic tomb, tomb has uh, two parts. A rectangular stone terrace directly above the real pit and the adjoining uh, entrance passage to the south. This is a, one of the examples of the Shun aristocratic grave site, as you see in the Golmod site. In the south of part of this cemetery, we have a Kunungod, it's like a Shun river. Uh, most of the uh, complex is divided into two or three main parts. So this is an example of the Golmod site mapping. 
as you can see, there is two main parts, northern and southern part of the cemetery. And during our research in Golmot site, we have identified some uh, stone lines which divide uh, the, this uh, cemetery in two parts. Yeah. Uh, dimension of the Shun aristocratic tombs, I compared all excavated uh, Shunu uh, tombs, as you can see in the picture. So depth depends on the size of the terrace. And uh, the shallowest one is five meter five in Tagelting Hotor, tomb 64, which excavated the Mongol American Joint Mission. I think Bayra worked there, Bayra Seven from National Museum. And nowadays, uh, most deepest burial is uh, from Kolmot and Noyungul site. And also in 2011, it was uh, the last uh, big excursion in Kolmot two site. You see in uh, east to the left, uh, to the right, yeah. The uh, most uh, deepest uh, burial, the Shun aristocratic, it's like 20 meter deep. So depth depends their size and tomb terrors. Yeah, the tomb is uh, form an inverted pyramid, as you can see on the photo. Uh, during the Excavation, our Russian and Mongolian uh, joint expedition colleagues uh, did some uh, photo with human scale. And often uh, one or more layers in stone are laid in the grave pit, as you can see on the drawing so from Takhilting Hotor. The uh, funeral chamber. The funeral chambers are mainly made by wooden logs it's possible to find that uh, they are either tombs with double chamber or single chamber. It's, it depends also from uh, tomb size. Tombs with uh, double burial chambers have been found in uh, tombs bigger than 20 meters. In the site Noingul and Goldmot, Goldmot 2, Ilmoya Pike and Tsaram. On this picture, I compared the Shunu double chamber uh, burial. As you can see, this is the Golmot site, all dimensions you have in the table. The burial chamber and coffin seem to have uh, been richly decorated. The walls could be covered in silk, adorned with geometric figures, Embellished with uh, catapulated patterns. The ordinary, ordinary people burials, birch bark or iron were used, but in the aristocratic burials, gold elements set with turquoise were frequently exhumed. The orientation and position of the skeletons, the re representation of moon and sun symbol of the sky and the dark universe after death. In the funeral rite of the Chunu, correspond to shamanic rituals. This is the coffin decoration as a shape wall. So the researchers think that uh, it's an imitation of the Mongolian uh, gear, as the tomb is uh, like a dead person's uh, house. Yeah? Also, we have one uh, example in Turkic period, in 7th century ritual site. As you can see, there is also the uh, figure, uh, wall-shaped patterns on this. As I told you, the Shunu aristocratic complex is, uh, also has uh, satellite tombs. So the satellite tombs are located in the right and left side of large terrace tomb. The satellite tombs placed on both sides of the main funeral complexes. This is one example from Dolmot II, first burial. 
also in Goldman site, there is uh, 16 tomb satellites. A tomb of the number of the tomb of satellites, it also depends from a uh, uh, main tomb. If the, the main tomb is bigger, then uh, it have uh, more uh, satellite tombs. Yeah? Let me show you some. So uh, this is Golmot 2 site. It's uh, satellite tombs all in the left side. But in Tsaram site, in uh, Buretia, we have a left or right side satellites. See? So during my research, I compared all the um, satellite uh, tomb excavation from uh, Golmot, Golmot 2. Durlignars and Tsaram. This is the comparison of paleoanthropological research. So I compare it. So uh, most of them, it's uh, like uh, 36 tombs, 74 percent is like uh, uh, 20 to 40 years old. Years tomb, yeah? <coughs> we have uh, only two tombs which. Uh, where uh, the old people, like uh, 40 to 52 years old. There is one interesting happening in uh, Durlignar's tomb uh, T20, uh, T2E. There is a man buried uh, with the uh, handcuffs. And the same situation we have in Ilmovaya part. It's like a tomb. Uh, uh, 54 there is also one man uh, buried with uh, handcuffs. So here we compare the overview of the most important artifacts in the inventory and their positions. Our German colleagues did some uh, comparison with uh, artifact uh, analysis. Yeah? It's like silver, gold, iron. Nefrit and uh, the bronze artifacts. So most, uh, all of the excavated tombs have been found in chariots. This is one example from Golmot site, tomb 20. And uh, you have uh, some uh, reconstruction of the images of the chariots. So during our research, we did some classification of the chariot, which found from a Shun aristocratic tomb. So first one is uh, chariots with shape of parasol. So found from Golmot and Golmot II, and also from Durlignars. Yeah. The second one is uh, chariots with the shape of stove. This uh, chariot is found from Golmot uh, Burial I and from Tsaram. And also, I compared it with some uh, images in the petroglyphs. As you know, it's the famous Yamamus petroglyph. And also, some images on beach bark objects from central Mongolia and Buryatia. And uh, during our research, we identified that uh, these uh, chariots from aristocratic graves are from Han Dynasty. For example, the first uh, type of the Parasol chariot, it's uh, like a Yao Che chariot from Han Dynasty. And second one is uh, it's, uh, more close to the chariot Qi Che from Han period. <coughs> and also uh, in uh, the burials from Central Mongolia, which uh, found some uh, harnesses decoration with uh, mythic animals like. Uh, a unicorn or yak shepherd predators or dragon shepherd. And uh, during my research, I compared it with uh, uh, objects from China and from North Korea, as uh, my colleague Kang Yung just uh, presented for you about this decoration from, uh, from North Korean uh, Nanan culture. Yeah? So I did some reconstruction of this harness uh, picture. 
uh, hardness depression with my comparing research. This is one example of the uh, findings from Golmot Tomb 20. So you can see some uh, horse beads and harnesses, some uh, bronze vessels and uh, ceramics have been found. This is also Golmot T20, some findings, some jades and some silver decorations. And uh, most of the burials also we have found uh, bronze mirrors from uh, Han Dynasty. This is one of them is found from Golmot T Tomb 20 to some uh, Chinese uh, uh, immortals of Taoism. It's a Wang Man period. This is one of the possibility to date the tombs. It's also one interesting finding from Golmot Tomb 1. It's a board game. We have found a board in a wooden board and some uh, stone figures. So I compared some uh, ancient uh, board games. This is uh, from uh, China. In that period, the Chinese had some uh, board games like Yubo or Shanxi, but our board game is different than uh, Chinese games. So it's uh, more close to the board game, it's the ancient Indian board game, Astapata. It's like uh, ancient chess. Yeah? Or we can say after that, Astapata, it became uh, like Chatarunga. It's a Mongolian word, is Chatar. It's became from an Indian name. Chatarunga, yeah? So more close to Chatarunga. Okay, about the dating of terrace tombs. Here I compared uh, all the uh, excavated 32 tombs. So according to the radiocarbon carbon analysis of uh, 32 tombs, uh, most of them, it's like uh, 77%, 24 tombs. It's, uh, it belongs to the 1st BC <coughs> and 2nd AD. And this argument confirms that the uh, opinion of researchers who believe that uh, the site of uh, Hunu aristocratic aristocracy in Mongolia and Transbaikalia belong to the history of the North Shumnu when uh, they began to settle in the regions north to the Gobi. the most ancient and most uh, late burials I marked on blue and red. And uh, we can uh, say, we have to say that uh, the red carbon dating, it depends uh, from the samples also, so it can be some difference. Yeah? There is also one uh, interesting uh, findings from Goldmott Tom 20. We compared it uh, like uh, from uh, Bactria. It's around, uh, it's a Tila Tepe site, around uh, uh, 2,000 kilometers from Golmot site. As you can see in, uh, in number one and two from Golmot, and number four is uh, from Tila Tepe site. It's exactly the same decorations. Also, I hear some uh, artifacts from uh, West origin. Uh, now is everybody knows about these objects from uh, Golmot II and Noyungula site, Greek gods and the Roman glasses. They historically, the Shunnu, they uh, controlled uh, one part of the Eurasian uh, part of the Silk Road. So they had the possibility to uh, have uh, this uh, West origin uh, objects yeah, by trade or by exchange. So here I compared the unicorn images from Godmot. And after our excavation in 2005, it also found from Godmot 
two and knowing all that side, it's one horn uh, antelope. So during my research, uh, I found the traditional Mongolian name of this uh, unicorn. It's like Bilgit Guros, it's a Mongolian name. And I compare it with uh, European unicorn images. And I mark it with arrows, the horn and body. Same. And uh, now most people think that unicorn is uh, one uh, single horn uh, horse, but actually in medieval period, unicorn, European unicorn, it's uh, as you can see in the picture, it's not a uh, horse. Yeah, it's exactly the same uh, antelope, which found from uh, Shun grapes. Yeah? Uh, this is the uh, map that we published in uh, our catalog, uh, Treasures of the Shunu. This is the origin of the uh, findings which are on the map. Okay, this is my conclusion. So you have that on the paper, so I think it's not necessary to read again. Yeah? Okay, thank you for your attention. Stand up here for a few minutes. So I think we have about five minutes for questions. Are there any questions? Can you go back some slides to uh, the one where you had the games? Board games? Yes. Okay. Yeah. With that image that's square with the things in there. Do you know what that means or where that comes from? It's a Mavandui, tomb number three, from uh, uh, 72nd BC. Yeah, but that, but that image. An image? Yeah. Uh, actually, it signify? Yeah, it's a Shanxi or Yubo. The, the Chinese, they had uh, two. Uh, board games in ancient time. The first one is uh, uh, Yubo, it's a board game, and the second one is uh, Shenqi, yes, you can see here. But the, but the image. The image. This, this is where the picture comes from? Ah, actually, it's uh, like uh, figures, I think. I compared only the uh, boards to show you how it's uh, different than uh, the Shunmu games. Yeah, I'm just wondering yeah. if anybody knew what that signified. Yeah. Unfortunately, I can't explain to you about the meaning. Or, yeah. It's, it's just uh, the but comparison of board, so I'm sorry. The reason I ask is because yeah. uh, my research in the Altai, uh -huh. Petrobus, okay. we have an image exactly like it. Mm. Can be, yeah. So it's not uh, it's not fit, fitting for the state region. So after Shunno, nobody used of the system in the Mongolia. Because it just compared to the migration from Bohai, Bohai, and Bohai people built at the this kind of older system, but it was developed. It's so so there is no gap for more than thousand years. And that's all. So that's the reason why it just all the system it just developed in Korea, not in China or Mongolia. It's that's the reason of the hitting system. 
I'm not a historian, so mm. I was happy to ask very nice questions. You found a lot of the Sunnu, or maybe Sunnu, Kunu. Kunu? Okay. Oh, that's what my question is. What's the relationship between Sunnu and Kunu? So it sounds like like Korean people say S yes, is missing, like, you know, her. Mm -hmm. Is that the right relationship with our Mongolian Korean people? Of the of this genetic thing. Mm -hmm. Of course the Skidari uh, state is existed in Mongolian territory, but I would like to know what kind of uh, genetic relationship with the modern Mongols. It's a already did some uh, genetic laboratory research, so it's uh, clear now. Oh, okay. The Shunu is ancestor of Mongols, okay. nowadays oh, Mongols. Yeah, that's so, really just exactly. Yeah. yeah. And also, one evidence is uh, like uh, most of the burial or archaeological sites are located in territory of Mongolia. This is also an evidence of archaeological evidence that the Shunu is ancestors of the Mongols. Yeah. The, uh, especially the aristocratic graves are located in Mongolia. Now we say Russia and China, but in that time it was the uh, nomadic emperor's uh, territory. Then so it's like a nomadic uh, people's live there. Why do we call Shunu? Ah, yeah, you mean about uh, the pronunciation? Oh, it's uh, like uh, from a Chinese uh, writing source. Yeah. But yeah. Can call Hans, yeah. But the Mongols, uh, Mongolians, we call the Hunnu, not Shunnu. Yeah. yeah. But in archaeological literature, because of the Chinese writing sources, uh, the, the, all the, the foreign scholars call like Shunnu. It's like Chinese, yeah. Because of uh, the because the archaeological uh, study just began in the beginning of 20th century. Before that, all the researchers. Uh, did uh, uh, work on uh, writing source like yeah, Chinese uh, Hangzhou yeah. or Shiji. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So we'll but the Mongolians one. call uh, Hunu. One more quick question. Yeah. So, <coughs> you know, you spent a lot of time on the Shunu studies, so I just, uh, first year, I'm looking for the subject graves of the Shunu mm -hmm. So, what, what do you think about this? Uh, the satellite graves, it's, it's just for kill for sacrifice, or just it's like they die the natural mm -hmm. uh, they were mm -hmm. next to the soil tomb. Uh, in a Chinese writing source in Shiji, we have uh, some information about the uh, Shunnu graves, especially the aristocratic or elite graves. Yeah? When they uh, died uh, some uh, aristocrat or some uh, important people, they also were to him some uh, slaves who can uh, uh, who he can use in uh, another life, uh, after life. That's why they did uh, some sacrificial tombs, like satellite tombs. And uh, with the uh, comparison of the paleoanthropological research, now it's uh, most of the researchers agree with this uh, uh, opinion. It's like uh, 20 to 40 years, so mostly the young people's bird. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm, I'm not speaker, professor.